Fire ecology. In my mind, it's a mixture of two of the coolest things that you can study. With wildfires being such a big part of the news again this year, you might be wondering if there's more jobs opening up in fire ecology. While the amount of money that's going into wildland fire in each state is going up each year, there's probably a ton of jobs already that you didn't know existed within fire ecology beyond just fire ecologists. And today, I'm gonna go over some job titles that you might not know about, some general requirements to get into these jobs, as well as a short description of what happens in these jobs and what they do, as well as some pro tips for getting ahead in the job hunt if fire ecology is a way that you wanna go. Hey, I'm Danny, and welcome to Ecology Story Mode. My first pro tip for people that wanna break into fire ecology is to not be too worried about getting something that says fire in the job. The last seasonal position that I worked was a riparian technician and the area that I worked in had a lot of wildfires and prescribed burns. So just because I was a riparian technician in that area, not only was I able to get a red card, but I was also able to monitor a whole bunch of post fire plots, giving me direct experience in fire ecology for future applications. Pretty much anybody that works in an area with fire prescribed or wildland, whether you're an archaeologist, resource person, ranger, has a resource that they monitor and largely get to deal with fire. Now the first job that I'm going to go over that you might not know about is Fire Effects Monitor, or FEMO for short. FEMOs generally require a bachelor's degree and most positions that I've seen through either state or federal agencies have had people working seasonal gigs before they get to a full-time spot if they have a bachelor's or if they have a master's you could potentially go straight into the fire work. Though I do think that there might be a strong preference here for people that have previous fire experiences so working those seasonal positions before might be a useful thing to do for this job. This is a position that's actually part of the incident command structure when it comes to prescribed burn and when you're on a burn you'll report directly to a burn boss. However, if you're a person that doesn't ever want to deal with the actual fires, there is also the possibility of just applying to one of these positions and being a person that just monitors post fire areas. Now if you're working on a fire, the bulk of your work is going to be collecting data about the intensity and behavior of a fire. Generally, there's an expected way that a prescribed burn is supposed to happen, and you're the person that's going to report back to the burn boss and let them know if things are going according to plan, if anything needs to change, as well as spending a lot of your time looking at weather data. When you're on a fire, a really big thing is that there's a localized weather pattern to wherever you are. So as much as you can predict the weather by looking at the forecast, what's actually happening in the area that you're burning in is very important, and this will be the bulk of your responsibility on a fire. A position that I actually interviewed for in the National Park Service as an FEMO did didn't actually require me ever having a red card or going on a fire. This position was largely working directly under a fire ecologist and establishing and monitoring post-fire vegetation plots and they do so much burning out there that they needed dedicated people to just be doing that part of the work. So if vegetation, botany are kind of your thing and you love the idea of working with wildfire or prescribed burns, this is a job you might be into. Now job two on this list is gonna be fuels planner. Generally, the fuels planner is gonna be somebody that has previous fire experience and has their bachelor's degree. From what I've seen, fuels planners are generally more tied to the forestry side of things, though not always depending on where you live and where the job is. One of the main objectives of this job is to allow fires to burn naturally. This goal is accomplished by helping restore ecosystems that have been suppressed over time through things like prescribed burning and mechanical thinning. Also, for people living in cities that have a fire threat associated with them. This is a job that is very important because you're the person that helps plan the areas that break the fire from actually hitting and impacting cities potentially. This feels like a good spot for pro tip number two, which is either going to be become a volunteer firefighter in the area that you live because there's benefits associated with it and you'll get relevant fire experience for these jobs. Or if you're in college, consider getting a job as a wildland firefighter in the summer. These jobs allow for you to get a summer position that works around your school schedule. And it's very nice if you're somebody struggling financially because you can make up to $20,000 in one season. As well as get real experience and know if this is something that you're actually interested in or just something that seems cool to you. Either way, I look at it as a win-win. Now, while the first couple positions looked at planning, what I'm gonna go into now is gonna be a position that looks at the post effect of a big fire, and that's gonna be somebody in the bear squad, or a BEAS, a Burned Area Emergency Response Specialist. Now, this is definitely more of a late career kind of position that you can get into, but I definitely wanted to add this into the list. 
because this is something that I'm personally interested in and it's an awesome late career goal to have for fire. Now within bear squads, specialist positions can range from anything to cultural resources, to natural resources, to urban planning. And it really is really diverse what you do, so I think the best way to describe it is kind of an example. After there's a big fire, especially in an area where there's a lot of people, a lot of new risks present themselves. If you lived in an area with a lot of thick vegetation and it all gets burnt out, now the risk is of flash floods, mudslides, and a whole bunch of other bad things happening post-fire really increases. As a bear squad, you're the emergency response people that go out after a big fire, look at the landscape and decide, hey, where are the big risks now? And put in emergency measures to help stop flash floods from hitting streets and neighborhoods and put down initial plans to help restore things. This job has so many people involved in it and so many different specialties that if you have pretty much any interest that involves cities or natural resources, you're gonna be able to find a job in this that's a late career job. So if fire is just something that you wanna keep doing throughout your career and follow any other path, this is a really cool thing to look at. The fourth job is gonna be fire ecologist. And now this is a job that's generally gonna be for people with a master's degree or a PhD. This position, your role is really gonna be the supervisor for the resources side of fires. You're gonna be overseeing things like prescribed burns in the area that you work, as well as monitoring the after effects of post fire areas. When making the decision to do a prescribed burn, usually there's a goal that's either having to do with fuels or invasive species management or a number of other things. And after those things happen, there's a chance that the effects aren't as intended. So you're gonna take data from all of the other people and pretty much say, hey, did we get the desired impact from all of these different treatments that we're doing? And ensure that whatever management plans are being implemented in your area that have to do with fire are actually getting the impact that people want. The fifth job on this list is gonna be range conservationist. Now, this job is generally going to require a bachelor's degree. It's actually one of the jobs that I mentioned in my federal conservation jobs video. This isn't just a federal position. Depending on what state you work in, this could be a state position or tied to a university system of some sort. Now, while the main focus of a range conservationist isn't going to be fire, this is a job where rangeland gets a lot of fire and a lot of prescribed burning happening on it. So you're going to get a lot of time to work with fire. Rather than being the main person that oversees fire, you're going to be part of an interdisciplinary team. Most of the work is doing higher resolution plots than you normally do to look at range area and utilization to look at post fire areas use that to help in not only fire ecology but also fuels planning the next job on this list is going to be range technician this is somebody that works underneath the range conservationist I wanted to add this position because it's the only position on this list that you get to work directly with fire ecology potentially and not have any sort of degree outside of a high school degree as well as some job experience. This is the really low bar to entry to get some experience with fire ecology. You're going to be working on those actual post-fire vegetation plots directly underneath botanists and range conservationists. I've personally worked with somebody that was a veteran and had no college degree and did this exact job. They really enjoy the job as well as they got to learn a ton and get to spend a lot of time out in the field doing fun science work. So if you're really early on, these are full-time and seasonal positions. So I would definitely look into it. Now, one of the last jobs on this list is gonna be wildland fire investigator. This is a job that's generally gonna have a lot of specialized training, but not necessarily require a bachelor's degree. Essentially in this job, you're gonna focus on wildland fires and go around and find sources of the fire and use the data you collect to help planners and fire ecologists when it comes to collecting localized and regional data that might help people prevent unexpected fires, focus their energy on better areas when it comes to things like prescribed burn and thinning, and help people predict where future fires are gonna be. Now, the last job on this list is gonna be fire educator. Now, this is something that I've seen a lot through colleges as well as states that have big forestry departments that deal with fire. Specifically, my main experience seeing people do fire education is through Cal Fire and through the UC system. As a fire educator, you're the person that goes into communities and communicates to everybody when is a good time to do prescribed burns? What are the legal requirements to have something like this happen? What are the costs to doing something like this? What are the benefits? Generally, just help people better understand fire ecology. As a fire educator, there's a lot of places where wildfires happen and people are terrified of those fires. You can help people gain a way more realistic understanding of what the actual threat of fire is to them, how it could impact them, and how they can avoid it. If you found this video helpful, drop a like. As always, let me know what parts you like of this video, what parts I can expand on. Uh, I'm just beginning making stuff like this, so subscribe if you want to see more of this. And as always, good luck on your job hunts, and have a nice day.